Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sister Rinoda. And uh, I believe that the Lord is going to bless us again as we are gathered here to reflect on his word, to reflect on his grace and also on his peace and the salvation that he has uh, manufactured and procured for us. Um, this morning, I want us to read the passage that we are all familiar with. The passage that we are all familiar with, and we always, whenever we pray, we, we mention these words. I'm reading the book of Hebrews chapter 4. I'm going to read verses 14, 15, and 16. Our focus is going to be on verse 16. Verse 14, Hebrew, the book of Hebrews chapter 4, chapter 4 starting reading uh, from uh, verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. 15. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And may God continue to, re to, to bless the reading of his word now and forevermore. Amen. Our topic this morning is going to be come boldly to the throne of grace. Come boldly to the, th to the throne of grace. Now we, are, we live in this, uh, we, are in, uh, we are in different countries and I know some are in the, uh, some are in the kingdom. Uh, not, not many are under the monarchy. Very few countries are still uh, under the monarchy. Yes, we do, we do have kings. We, uh, the, the, the concept of a throne, I want to believe that we, we have an idea of what a throne is, but we don't know much about the throne. Uh, now, I want to mention to you because we, we, to a larger extent, most of us come from the republics, um, Republic of South Africa, Republic of Malawi, Republic of Zimbabwe, Republic of Zambia, Republic of Kenya. I can mention so many republics and, and, and we, we, to a larger extent, follow the politics of the republic. But now the temptation is to think that heaven is a republic, that we are going to the republic of heaven. Uh, I want to shock you, we are going to the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom has a throne and God is sitting on the throne. So we need to start uh, unlearning the issues around the, the, the republic and start focusing on the throne and start focusing on the kingdom of heaven. But this morning, I want to talk about a different throne, the throne of grace, the throne of grace. Um, the word throne in the Bible appears about 86 times. And in the book of Hebrews, where the, the book that we're focusing in uh, on the, this morning, the, the, the throne appears four times. And um, Three times the thrones uh, are focused. That is, God is sitting, God the Father is sitting on the throne. This is now Hebrews chapter 8, verse 1, and also Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, and also Hebrews chapter 4, verse 6. In the passage that we have read, which has become the, the topic of our uh, reflection this morning, that throne, the throne of grace, grace it's actually the throne that the father is using. The father is sitting on the throne of grace. And, but then we also learn that Jesus Christ is there as our, as our high priest. Now, I'm comforted this morning because the high priest is on my side. I'm comforted this morning because the one who's sitting on the throne is not sitting on the throne of justice and the throne uh, of judgment because I would be shivering 
if he was sitting on the throne of justice, I would be trying to justify myself to try to prove that I'm innocent. Uh, but he's sitting on the throne of grace. I don't have to. I don't have to argue. I don't have to prove my innocence. Actually, I'm not innocent. But the one who's standing next to the throne, the the high priest, is righteous. I'm now tapping on his righteousness. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable this morning. I'm happy this morning because the throne is the throne of grace. It's not the throne of justice. And, and we, are, we, are, we are invited to come boldly. Now, we need to be careful. We don't come boldly because God is indebted to us. We come boldly because we can come freely because it is the throne of grace. And the one that is sitting, that is standing next to that throne, the high priest, is on our side. Uh, we come boldly, not because we deserve, but because it is free. We come boldly, not because we have done something good, because even our righteousness, according to the Bible, are like filthy rags. We simply approach through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So our boldness is not in deserving our bold. Actually, while we are bold, we should be humble because we are approaching through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We are approaching through the grace of Jesus Christ. We are approaching through the salvation that was procured for us, yet given free of charge to us. And, 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 and we, are, we are required to trust what God has done for us, to trust it, to trust, to have faith in the means and the, and the way of salvation we are encouraged to trust that, to have faith in that, not to replace it because it's not adequate, not to try to save ourselves because we can do a better job. Actually, we do a worse job. We are simply invited to trust what God has done. We are invited to have faith in what God has accomplished, to trust his ways and his means to trust the terms of our salvation, to trust the means of our salvation, the terms of our salvation, Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus Christ wants us to, to, to be saved the way he wants. The means of salvation, Jesus Christ himself, his righteousness. We need to trust that. We need to have faith in what God has done for us. And the terms and the means of salvation have not changed. They've been the same. All of them come from God. Our grace, our salvation come outside of us, come from outside of us, but for us, procured on the cross of Calvary, for us, for our benefit, but independent of us. We simply receive that through the hand of faith. That's why we are required to trust. And even that faith, it's a gift from God. We are given faith so that we can have a hand to receive what God has done for us. And those terms and the means of salvation, the means of grace have not changed. From Eden to the new Jerusalem, they have not changed. From Genesis to the book of Revelation, they have not changed. The terms and the means of our salvation, the terms and the means of our grace have not changed, have not changed. In the Old Testament, we're following the same, same means and the same terms. They have not changed. Salvation is always, and it will always be outside of ourselves. Will always be come to us from Jesus Christ. We simply receive what has happened outside of us, independent of us, but for us, and we receive it as a gift. Now, if you go to Leviticus chapter 16, the high priest, remember in the book of Hebrews, Jesus Christ is the high priest. Now, the high priest in the book of Leviticus chapter 16 was following exactly the terms which was provided by God. He was symbolizing Jesus Christ. And 
In Leviticus chapter 16, the high priest, once a year, he would enter into the sanctuary. He would slaughter, he would slaughter a bull for himself, and he would slaughter a, a, a ram for, 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 for the entire uh, congregation. And to cleanse the sanctuary, he would slaughter a, a goat, and he would cleanse the sanctuary. Now, I want to pay attention to what I'm going to say. After making the sacrifice, he would take the blood and he would walk into the sanctuary. While he was walking, he would be walking as a person, but he would also be walking as a people. The people would not enter the sanctuary. They would be standing outside. He would be walking with them in his conscience. He, is, he would be walking as a person and walking as a people. And he would cleanse the sanctuary and he would transfer sin, carry it in his conscience and outside of the sanctuary and put it on the goat, which is the goat uh, or the scapegoat. And it would be taken to the wilderness. And the people, the sanctuary and the priesthood would be cleansed of sin and sin would be purged and it, it would be sent away from the people at that point you have a new creation. Everyone is forgiven. The high priest was representing what, what Jesus Christ is doing in the book of Hebrews. Now, another story in Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7, there's a story about the animals, but within the story of animals, the story is disrupted by the Son of Man. If you read Daniel chapter 7 from verses 19, from verses 9, 10, 11, and 12, and also read verse 22. The, 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 the story says, and someone like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and he was ushered in into the, into the ancient of days whose hair was as white as wool and the books were opened and judgment began. And, and it also mentions that the angels ministered, for, ministered, no, ministered uh, with, with the father. And, and, and later on in verse 22, of the book of Daniel chapter seven, we read that judgment was given in favor of the saints. Now notice the son of man walked alone into the judgment hall. And when he left, the benefits are for the saints that the benefit. So he walked alone as a person, but he was carrying the people. And I'm happy that he was also carrying me. I was outside, but he was there carrying me. And when he, when he left the judgment hall, judgment was given in favor. I benefited from that. Judgment was given in favor of the saints. Now, coming back to the passage that we read, to the passage that we read, and, and we, are, we, are, we, are, we are encouraged to come boldly, not because the boldness that has humility in it, the boldness, not the assertiveness as if everything depends on us, but the boldness because we can access the, 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 the throne of grace because it is a throne of grace. And the father is there on our behalf. And the high priest is also carrying us there. That's why we can come boldly, but humbly, boldly in the, in the, to, the, to the throne of grace. Now, if you read this passage, this passage, actually the story started in Hebrews chapter three, continues in Hebrews chapter four and climaxes in Hebrews chapter four, the, uh, 14, 15, and 16. Now, in the book of Hebrews, Paul is trying to convince the children of Israel, the Hebrews, that through and through from the book of Genesis, throughout the Old Testament, throughout the New Testament, faith has been a requirement. Trust in God has been a requirement. And God had promised the children of Israel uh, to give them rest. He had promised them rest. And, and he wanted them to accept this rest through faith. And, and because they lacked faith, he even used the Sabbath. And he says, uh, I want you to remember the Sabbath. You don't get it. I'm trying to teach you faith. I'm trying to teach you to trust what I'm doing for you so that you don't have to do things for yourself. I want you to trust what I'm doing for you. 
I liberated you. I redeemed you. I saved you. I'm leading you. I'm protect. Trust that. Have faith in that. Don't try to zama zama. Don't try to save yourself. Trust what I have done for you. For you. Don't try. It's adequate. Don't add anything. Accept it as is. It's perfect. Accept it the terms. Accept it the means of your grace. And this story would be diff difficult to be, to be understood by the children of Israel. We always want to do something. We always want to help the Lord. We always, and we have this thing that the Lord helps those who help themselves. In the matter of salvation, we fold our arms and we reach out through faith and receive the terms and the means of our grace and of our salvation. So they missed this story. They always wanted to do something. So this passage is saying, I've been wanting to give you rest so that you rest from the labors, your own labors, the, the labors of trying to save yourselves. I want you to rest in what I've done for you. And, and because they don't get it, he then uses the Sabbath as a symbol, not as a substitute, not He's not saying, I'm now changing the terms. The terms are still in place, but I'm, I'm going to use the Sabbath because when I created heaven and earth, this is God now. When I created heaven and earth, you were not there to see. And when I rest, rested on the seventh day, I invited you to my rest. You came as a guest to my rest. You had not been working. I, God, have been working. You simply benefited from my works. I want you to get this. I'm using the Sabbath so that you can understand what I'm trying to do. I'm saying, don't do anything. Rest in what I have accomplished for you. I'm taking you to, the, to Canaan. And I want to, you to see Canaan as rest. But because you don't see it, because you think this, you have done this through your, your own hands. I'm also promising you, even the heavenly Canaan is a gift. I want you to rest. I want you to relax while I do things for you. I want you to come boldly to the throne of grace so that you can receive mercy for your, for your needs. Now, as we bring this to a close, I, I might ask Jesus, you are, you, are, you are interceding for me in, the, in heaven. Who, who, who's all out to get me out of there? Who, who, who's, is, is it God the Father? Who doesn't want? Why do you have to intercede? Who, who has a problem with me being there? And Jesus Christ says, no, it's not the Father. It's not the Father. Actually, the Father is sitting on the throne of grace. Actually, it is the father who sent me to go and get you. The father is interested in this. The father, the father is sitting on the throne of grace for you. That grace is not for him. It's for you. So the father wants you there. But who doesn't want me there? I don't want to talk about it, but you know, the, 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 the evil one does not, does not want you there. But we're not going to talk about that. I want you to focus on what the Father is doing for you. I want you to focus on what I'm doing for you. And, 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 and Jesus is the high priest. And he's inviting us. He's saying to us, come, come. The thrones of this world are not accessible. But the throne of grace, everyone has access. Come, come boldly but humbly at the same time. Boldly because it is free, humbly because it is grace. Boldly because we have the high priest who understands our cases. Humbly because he's there for us. Boldly because the father is on our side. Humbly because we are receiving the gift of grace. May God bless us this morning as we reflect upon these words. Amen.
Thank you amen. so much. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, my pastor. The conditions and benefits of our salvation has never changed. Amen to the throne of grace and boldly because it is free, humbly because it is the grace of God. Thank you for that sharing this morning. 